Wildpack. Wild Pack, it's Mama Bear, aka Bernadette, and I am here with a special edition, your April 8th eclipse. Eclipse. Did I really say that? I did. I've been working so hard all day. I said eclipse. It is your April 8th eclipse and new moon forecast. It is full, and I mean jam-packed full of information for you to get the most out of this April 8th solar eclipse because it is, oh, holy guacamole. It is the dealio. It is strong. It is, uh, you'll hear it all because we've got information about uh, ceremonies and rituals and a tarot spread and crystals and the symbolism because it's the Aries new moon. And we've got to talk about, eh, 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 we, you know, you got to talk about the goats. You got to talk about the rams. We've got it all mushed up in here. And uh, I just, I implore you, I beg you, I mama bear you, duh. I mama bear you to get into this solar eclipse because on April 8th, which is tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you tomorrow. Uh, you're not even a whole day away because I'm late getting this out. But I implore you to take a look at these things, incorporate some of them in your routine tonight, tomorrow, even the next day when you've got the new moon hangover. And we're even going to talk about what is it? Dare we even say it shall not, it, sh it, it who shall not be named Mercury retrograde. Dun, 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 dun. We're going to talk about all that and how to survive Mercury retrograde because you can and you will, you will, you will, you will look into my eyes. You will. And uh, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of other junk in there. I spent all dang day writing this thing. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a lot out of it. And let me know in the comments below if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you love it. And please consider subscribing to my channel. Give uh, this a thumbs up, this video a thumbs up. And I'm going to stop yakking now and get right into everything. Because again, this is this April uh, eclipse is no joke. There's not going to be another one like it until like 2044, 2044. Okay. That's a long way away. So, all right, here we go. And you might see me looking off camera a little bit. Y'all, I took so dang many notes because there's just so much going on. I, whose head could keep all of this in? So again, this kind of eclipse is not going to happen again until 2044. So one of the first things that I will tell you is I have gotten a ton of emails, a ton of text messages, a ton of Facebook, and just in any way somebody can get a hold of me, um, carrier pigeon, and asking me if if they're okay, like they're feeling either really off or they're feeling so energized, they're like this, right? Even they they make cereal in the morning and they're like, oh yeah, I'm a hero. Oh yeah, I got it going on. And that's because you do. The, the energy behind this solar eclipse is what? Solar. That's sun energy. That's fire energy. That's all those luscious colors and and, 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 and energies. And if you're an empath, which if you're watching my channel, you are, you're probably into shamanism, psychic readings, tarot readings, uh, healing, Reiki, quantum touch at all. And so that means you're a highly sensitive person, right? And even if you're just now exploring this, uh, you know, if you're just now getting into metaphysics, that doesn't mean you're not feeling it. And it doesn't mean that you haven't been feeling it since you were, oh, say, born. And so hopefully this video can help shed light on a whole bunch of those questions that you guys have been asking me because Mama Bear cares. And I do, y'all, I read every email that comes to me. I may not be able to answer them all, which I can't, but I promise you I read every single one. And I just, I want to answer everybody. Truly, I do. Uh, there are not enough hours in these days that we live in at this time. One day there will be. So um, if you are, <laughs> oh God, oh Lordy. I had one person write me a book. I was like, you, you put this email in chat GPT four plus, didn't you? I know you did. Nobody, nobody writes emails this long anymore. <laughs> you just put what you want in AI and it, it writes the email for you. This thing was a book, but if this person will do everything that they have that they wanted, like they, they wrote a manifesto of all the things that they want to do. And I was like, 
I'm not that ambitious and I'm a pretty darn ambitious person and like type A, 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 A personality, right? But all I could, all I could hear, oh God, all I could hear in my head while I was reading this manifesto was, this is Sparta. That's all I could hear. <laughs> so, oh God. The, uh, and let me just tell you, that particular battle cry is brought to you by Gerard Butler in the movie 300. It's, uh, you know, listen, he might as well have been waging war against Mercury retrograde because, you know, Mercury retrograde, it, that, that B came for us on April 1st and it is going to keep coming to, you know, uh, for us and for us and for us. But we've got this solar eclipse to offset it. We've got the new moon to offset it. And so let's get into some of the spiritual significance of you know, a new moon and this, this particular eclipse is so, you know, this total solar eclipse. And let's talk about some of that because, it, you know, listen, I, I, I have two of the biggest metaphysical websites on the internet, right? What is my spirit animal.com. There's nothing more comprehensive about spirit animals anywhere in the world, including my tarot book or my tarot deck and my, and my encyclopedia that's 726 pages, no joke, 726 pages. And um, when it comes to tarot and lots of other symbolism, you know, there's only a couple others on the internet that's as big uh, as buildingbeautifulsouls.com. And that is getting bigger by the day. So pretty soon here, it, it will be the biggest free metaphysical resource that there is. And uh, what is um, what is my spiritanimal.com is a free metaphysical resource for you guys to take a look at. So um, nothing is bigger than those, but, you know, listen, symbolism, schmimbolism, right? You can talk about the meaning of something all day long. You can talk about the symbolism of something all day long, but unless you put that symbolism into practice in your own personal life, what does it really mean? You can intellectualize it, but until you put that in motion, in action, big diff, big deal, who cares, right? So let's talk about some of how you can do that and how you can really um, reimagine and reawaken your own life. If, you know, whatever the parts of it that you are not pursuing right now, your passions, your desires, your, you know, what your real dreams are living on your true, most sacred purpose. It's time for you to do that. And I, uh, listen, y'all, I have a, <laughs> I've got a mentorship going on right now. And these mentees, <clears throat> my little cubbies, um, my, 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 I just love these people. I mean, I love them from as much as you can, I love them. And they are just, uh, they are in the thick of it right now. They truly are in the thick of it because what they're finding out is whether, whether they actively put into, um, motion, what their deepest desires are, what their most um, cherished dreams are, they're being shoved down. <laughs> they're like, go, go, go. D you know, they're like being shoved out on stage and, uh, you know, trying to climb back over mama bear's, you know, face. At this, <laughs> you ever seen a cat, you're holding a cat and a cat gets scared and it climbs right up over your face. And people are like, where'd you get the, where'd you get those claw marks? And like my cat. And they're like, Oh, okay. They understand totally. Um, it, it's like that this year, 2024. And let me just say, I know you didn't hear it here first, but you heard it up for the half, most of the half of last year. This was going to be a year that was going to drag you there up by your hair and yank you right out the door and make you do something that will move more in alignment down a path that's in more alignment with what you really dream and what you really want. And this is the year that everything, the universe, well, the universe always conspires in your favor. I'm, I'm, I believe that I truly do, but this is the year that you can make quantum leaps in what you want to do. No matter where you're at in life, you can make quantum leaps. If you'll just believe, don't make me break into that song. Um, cause then it'll be a whole musical Sunday and you know, it, that, that will go badly. So anyway, okay, look, here's the story. Let's start with new moon symbolism, new moon meaning. Let's just start with that. Yes. We know that it's a time to set your new intentions. And this new moon is the time to set your new intentions. 
and it'll all come into play over the next six months. Okay, six months doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're working towards a goal, six months can be no joke. I mean, it can just be craziness, right? Just craziness. And so I encourage you to sit for a minute before you declare your intentions. Make sure that they're the intentions that you truly want to declare. And when you do so, do it with all your heart. Every ounce of everything you've got in every chakra, but do it with your heart chakra until your heart chakra is just like this blazing green that you may never have seen before, right? You just amp up the power in that puppy and you spit that out into the universe and the universe catches it and says, play ball, right? Okay. So you want to do that first before you, you know, before you utter a word, before you write something down on paper and you burn it in a fire or light it with a candle or bury it in the ground or whatever your ceremony or ritual is going to be for doing that. D do it first with your heart, right? Okay. So it's, I, you know, I would also tell you to, <laughs> I don't know why I've got so many songs rolling around in my head right now. All I can think of is salt and pepper, you know, work it and reverse it, you know, salt and pepper's here. And we're anyway, the reason I say work it and reverse it is <clears throat> I had a very wise client say to me this past week, man, I can't get this thing out of my head. And she said that she tells her friends, pick your heart. So if you're not working towards your goals and you're not working towards your dreams and you're sitting around miserable with your life, which is a lot of my clients, they will call and book a reading because they're not happy where they're at, but neither are they moving towards what it is that they want, which is harder, not moving towards what you want or not having what you want what, or, or moving towards what you want or not having what you want. What's going to be the harder thing in your life? My guess is your confidence is the thing that's hardest in your life because if you had the confidence, if you had a support system, which may turn out to be just yourself. I mean, I know many, many, many an artist. It's always comes down. Nobody ever says to their child, don't be a scientist. Don't be a doctor. Don't be a lawyer. Don't be a, no one ever says that. But when a kid comes and says, I want to be a professional dancer, I want to be an actor, I want to be a model, I want to be an artist, their parents are just like, no, you're not doing that. Uh, and I know that because I worked in the entertainment business for 30 years. But the point is, is that you may have to end up being your support system. Uh, okay, you have one support system. That's all you need. That's all you need is one. And even if you had 50 around you, and I know people that have 100 support systems around them, and they still won't support themselves because they're scared. I understand that. Truly, 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 I do. I started out this life so unconfident that I, my school teachers and my principal used to call my mom and go, we are really worried about her. She will not talk to a person. She'll talk to the adults. She'll sit in an adult room all day long. She wants to work in the office. She's nine years old and she wants to know, could we hire her in the office to answer phones before school? What schmuck does that? This, this schmuck, right? Okay. So, um, in it, I'm in any event, that's where I, get your confidence under control. Even if you don't have your confidence under control, start, find a way, a pathway for you. That's going to help you get with the program and start down the road. Even if it's one little bit at a time, which by the way, Aries and which is Ram and goat energy is here to help you with this month. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay. So, um, the other one that I will tell you is, um, as you are working through the significance and the meaning and the symbolism of the new moon and the April 8th eclipse, and you know, you're working with all of that consistency is key. I don't care if it's pick one thing and do it every day for a week and don't jump into something and go, I'm going to do this an hour every day. You might, if you do, can, can I hire you? <laughs> I will hire you as a coach because I start out with that crap and I just don't, I don't, 
I don't. Now, there are many things that I'm consistent with that other people would rather tear their own air, arm off and beat themselves over the head. It, go figure. But there are some things that are super easy for some people, um, like giving up sugar. <clears throat> uh, wow, that's a hard one for me. <sighs> but I'm back. So it, it, consistency. Spend one minute on something, one minute on something that's going to get you in this new moon energy in 2024, which is the year of that, okay, um, or the year of that, oh, my rotator cuff, oy vey, um, it, it's the year of that, and now we're in this solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse, and we're in new moon energy, and yes, Mercury retrograde, the, you know, the OGM awe. It started on April 1st. April 1st is April Fool's Day. If you give in to that, well, the joke's on you, ain't it? So don't do it. Um, anyway, all that said. So pick one thing and be consistency is key. Because why? Because you get knocked down, but you get up again. Na, 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 na. Um, and that's not just a song. That's Mama Bear saying, yeah, you got knocked down, get up again. Put on your big girl britches, your big boy britches, your whomever britches, and get your piney up. Let's go. Unless you've crossed over into the other realm and then still you ain't getting knocked down for wrong in the other realm, believe me. And if you're listening to me talk in the other realm, you know what I'm talking about. So there. Got it? Good. Got it? Get it? <laughs> I had a friend in high school. He'd go, got it? Get it? Good. Um, star of the football team. We were really... <laughs> really, really, really good friends. Oh, we were the kookiest friends ever. Uh, but yeah, so he taught me about football stuff and I taught him not a lot. Anyway, it was a good guy. Uh, so I am looking at some notes because again, I got like 8,000 million jillion notes. Oh, you know what? And here's, <laughs> here's the other thing. I am a big fan of movies <clears throat> as evidenced by my being in the entertainment business. And I'm still a big fan of movies. I stay up way too late watching them. Even the, even the, anyway, one of the things that I will suggest to you is for those of you that love movies, for those of you that love music, take some time, find some movies that inspire you like Rudy or, uh, I don't know. I could name 500 movies that are inspirational. They're full of fiery passion. And I mean all kinds of fiery passion. I'm not talking about passion just for what you do, like your sacred purpose in life, your, your career, your this, your that. But I mean passion as in <laughs> kind of passion because we want all our chakras firing. We want all cylinders firing and maybe that's where you need the wake up call right now. You know, you just need to take one for the team. You being your team. That's what I mean. Don't write me and think I said anything else because I did it. But that might awaken you. And that might make you say, ah, like when Stella got her groove back. So in any event, uh, I would just make a list. And all of this week, I would play music. I would, you know, Katrina in the waves comes, you know, I'm walking on sunshine. Oh, and as soon as my thyroid gets healed, I'll be able to sing again. Oh, oh you know, and uh, oh, my God, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I could see all obstacles in my way. That song in uh, Gone on the Dark Clouds, it had me. It's going to be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. There, y'all, there's a jillion of them. And so play music, watch movies, all of those things that for those of us that are very visual, um, really auditory, they will, they will help quite a bit. And uh, movement will help. And <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever ask a Scorpio to do any kind of commentary about movement. Don't do it because there's only one kind that we care about. <laughs> Please tell me I don't need to <laughs> explain that to you all. And don't make me name the signs that I would have to explain that. <laughs> oh god explain that too now before you write me ah i snorted because i already know 
you guys, some of you guys that are not Scorpios are going to get triggered by what I just said. <laughs> You're going to go on a rampage that I was discriminating <laughs> in some kind of way um, against y'all. I'm not. I'm just making a joke at Scorpio's expense, kind of, sort of. But anyway, okay. So here's the thing. When you are talking about the spiritual significance and the energy of this solar eclipse on April 8th, okay, and you're talking about it also being a new moon, not only just a new moon, but a new moon in Aries, that's like dipping a defibrillator, defibrillator, defib defibrillator into a big giant bowl of straight up espresso and then sticking it on somebody's chest and going clear. <laughs> That is going to bring them back to life forever. They, they may be the person you're like, are you really Benjamin Button? Or what's the, any of the movies where people live forever, right? Um, and so uh, the Green Mile, if you haven't seen the Green Mile, please, I'm begging you watch the Green Mile in any event. So all of that being said, you, you may very well feel like you're going at warp speed because in your spirit you are. And if you haven't recognized that yet, please do. There are so many talented people in this world. And if you're watching this video, I bet on you. I believe in you. I believe in your creativity. I believe in your intelligence. I believe in your desire to do good things in the world. And I do that because I, 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 I yeah, I started 30 years ago as an evidential psychic medium. Yeah, I still do readings today, that, tarot readings. My big thing is spirit animals, so on and so forth. And yes, I do that, happily so. I'm very grateful for what I do in life. I wouldn't trade it for the, I wouldn't trade it for anything. But it doesn't take a psychic medium, tarot reader, whatever person to know. If you're watching me, you're into metaphysics. And you're kooky. So you put those two things together and you can come up with some really cool stuff in this world. And I know that you want to do it or you wouldn't be watching this. And so I believe in you and anything I can do to help you short of you writing me a manifesto, please don't. Um, as much as I would love to read an entire manifesto, I'm not going to do that. Just so you know, um, I, uh, I bet on you and that's all I'll say. About, I, I will, I, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say about that. So here are some other ways that you can really embrace the energy of the new moon. Uh, well, and let me be really, really clear. This is about an Aries new moon. And that makes it like by the time you add a solar eclipse to it, okay, you're, you're talking about some big stuff, which I've already said. So let me just go into this. Okay. I am a big fan of hair and makeup and clothes and shoes and jewelry and all that kind of thing. You wouldn't have known it over the last year of my life, but you know, I'm getting back in the groove. So I, you know, things that you can do that are not outward, you know, you don't have to like, you know, if you work in an office where people poo poo this kind of stuff, you know, it's not like you have to go in with a tarot card, with tarot card earrings. Uh, although there's some really cute ones on Etsy really, really cute ones. And so you don't have to do that, but you can wear clothing and you can do your makeup and you can wear shoes and you can do your nails where you've got that fiery, luscious, -y, orangey sun energy. Um, I'm even a big fan of wearing yellow for uh, Aries, even though, you know, there are some purists or, well, they think they're purists, uh, like the Malfoys in Harry Potter that are just like, that yeah, yellow, that is not the color of Aries because it's not the color of Mars, because it's not the color of fire, because it's not and and yes, I I understand that Aries is a fire sign. I really do. But I'm gonna tell you this: if you've ever sat out by a campfire or a bonfire, as this Florida girl has a good jillion times in my life, you'll see that fire burns white. That's why it's called white hot you'll see that fire burns blue. Yeah. So those are the colors of fire. And can you, listen, you want sexy, you put yourself in a solid white outfit and have just your shoes be red, just your nail polish be red, just your earrings be red, three things on you that are red. 
and maybe a red necklace. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit of red in it, but more like the, the, I don't know why I'm giving fashion advice, but that's sexy. Put yourself in blue and make everything silver, you know, up against that blue, <laughs> whether it, it doesn't matter what gender that you associate with, it does not matter. We're talking about the colors that make you feel hot, you know, as in feeling hot, 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 dun, 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 dun. one day when I am uh, back in the swing of things, I swear I am going, I am limbo under the limbo stick. Okay. So all of that said, there's the clothing ritual, the makeup ritual, the nails ritual, uh, you know, even hair, a barrette. you get the picture. Okay. You get the picture. All right. Food. Oh, here's something I could go on with forever and ever and ever and ever. Why can't you have a food ritual I, every day? Let me tell you something for this person who happens to know a lot of people with a lot of autoimmune issues, me included, I've I have issues and other people I know have IBS or they've got other gastric things that make what they used to love. God bless America. They got to go through. You don't even know what to be able to digest it or taste it or have it. A people with long term and pl please don't have a conversation about COVID on my channel. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't. But I'm just saying there are some things that people have now. They still don't have their taste back three years later. I, I, I cry for them every day. I really do. I mean it because food is a way of life for me. Right? So even with the food thing, you want to talk about food that you can incorporate in a ceremony and a ritual for this new moon or this April 8th eclipse. You're talking about Mexican. You're talking about Asian curries. Oh, Asian curries. Um, nom, 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 right? Um, and I'm a Southern girl. So, you know, if you are, if you, well, whether you eat meat or not, you can always have the, you know, the fake wings, that kind of thing. And you do those Tennessee hot wings. All I can say is somebody get an IV bag, get me some hot sauce, some cayenne, maybe even some ghost peppers, just a beansy bit of ghost peppers. And you know what? I would even chance a beer at this point. I, I used to drink a lot of beer. Oh, yesterday. It seems so far away because it was. Okay. We've already covered, covered movement. Now, I know. I, okay. I really wasn't joking when I said never, ever, 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 ever ask a Scorpio to do any kind of video about movement being life because movement is life, you guys. And if you have ever been in a situation, sorry, that was my dog or one of my dogs. I was like, who are you? Um, I, uh, if you've ever been in a situation where you haven't been allowed to move, like I wasn't for almost three months when I had uh, a broken leg and a third hip surgery all in the same two days, you will discover what movement means to you, even if you're not athletic, but I took 14 years of dance and I never was athletic and I will never claim to have ever been in the best shape like an, an, an athlete or even somebody in really good shape is, but I was strong and I was healthy and I could go, 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 go like the, like the energizer bunny. I mean, it would take a sledgehammer to make me drop. I didn't go fast, but I could go forever. You'll understand what movement means. And, um, Gosh, I want to go there. Did you see my eyes? <laughs> like, do I go there? Do I maintain my professional integrity? What do, I'm going to maintain my professional integrity, but I will say that if there is any other movement for which you uh, have lived for, uh, and and that that has been missing from the landscape that is your life, you will know. You will know. And that's all I'll say. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of water. So if it sizzles out of here, that's because I am preparing for the smoke and hotness of the solar eclipse. And no matter how cold something has been today, when I have touched it, it's been like steam heat, baby. Steam heat. So hold on one second. <laughs> Did you see that? The heat? Yeah. Okay. So now let's move on to, we've talked about those rituals. Okay. 
um, one of the things that I really do want to address again, I know this is like the longest video ever, but when I, when I, when I tell you, and you know this, like, I know that you know this, right? I'm not an astro. Well, I'm not an astrologer. I don't want to be an astrologer. Those people are too smart for me. And I just, man, I, I bow to you astrologers. Truly I do. Or anybody learning astrology, that stuff is confusing. It's a lot to learn and I got nothing. I can memorize a tarot card in a nanosecond. You put those charts up with the houses and the this and the that and the other. And I'm just like, I, I can't run away fast enough. So that said, it's not that I don't know what the times are about, right? And I, because I've been feeling, feeling this coming, I've done a lot of reading, a lot of asking my, my super, uh, super educated astrologer friends about this particular time in history, because it feels to me like nothing else I've ever felt in, in other times like this. Right. So I want to say that if you, I don't care how old you are, if you want to transform something in your life, now is the time to do it. This is transformative energy, period, end of story. And everything in you knows what you want. It's only your mind that is stopping you. Please stop letting things stop you. Stop letting yourself stop or be stopped. That's let's go over it again. Let's sing, sing those songs that you, that you research and that resonate with your spirit. Um, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot this. So I love crystals, the ones that I love, which are like four or five different kinds, but I'm not one of those crystal hounds that have them everywhere. And I'm certainly not a crystal, a crystal. I'm not a crystal expert of any kind, but I, I do absolutely positively believe in their magic and their energy and their abilities. Uh, one day we'll talk about some of the experiences I've had that left me gobsmacked to this day. And those experiences were years ago. So what I will tell you is get your crystals out, right? And for you crystal people out there, you probably already know that. But what I will tell you is, please do not be stuck in, well, this is a solar eclipse. So I can only have red stones or orange stones or, you know, stones that have orange and red in them. I don't find that to be true at all. I find it to be true that if black tourmaline or smoky quartz or uh, whatever is, you know, bloodstone, for God's sake, it's green. So if that's, if, if let's say bloodstone, right? Like that's a lot about family. Let's say that you've got, you want to start a family this year. Let's say that you lost somebody dear in your family and you want to start mediumship communication, talking to dead people. Let's say that you want to do X, Y, and Z, and that's what your passion is. And it has, you know, crystals that are associated with it that really do it for you and get your chakras spinning and cleansed and balanced and aligned and activated and all of that. Choose the stones that are right for you. Now, will it hurt to throw some garnet in there? No. Will it hurt to throw a couple of rubies in there? No. Will it hurt? You get the picture. I mean, even mukite, right? Oh, love me some mukite. Um, I'm an ocean jasper girl, but I can't think of... I, have I ever seen an ocean Jasper with those colors in it? I might have maybe once or twice, but in any event, um, you get the picture, right? Choose those stones, choose the ones that are right for you. Now, let me just say, I went searching for a, uh, a tarot spread and I will tell you straight up. Thank you. Parade.com parade.com. The link will be, uh, right up here or here. I can never, <laughs> I can never remember which, um, which, uh, side it comes up on, forgive me, but it also gives me the chance to do that. And I know it's silly, but I love it. So I found it on parade.com. The link to the article is right up there. And man, I just really liked how succinct it is. And it really, it, 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 
I just think it's really robust, but yet cuts to the chase. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of uh, tarot things that you can do to get some clarity on, you know, if you've got dreams and I know you do. And if you're already working towards your dreams, yeah, baby go, because this da, what you're going to accomplish between now and the next six months, if you commit and if you're consistent, 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 consistency is key. Consistency is key. Consistency is key. Let me just tell you, consistency is key. You're going to hear me say that a million times. I'm reminding myself and I'm reminding you, consistency is key. I don't care that you have a cold. I don't care that you feel bloated. I don't care. I mean, I care because mama bear cares. I do. Truly, I do. Um, but let's have a mama bear moment for a moment, which is, let me talk some real smack. I know people that have, uh, I have a dear friend who has been a cancer dancer four times. She got up, she went out, she showed people houses. She's one of the top producing real estate people in our area, which says a lot because in the place that I live, it's a small place, but dang, we, there's a lot of real estate that goes on here, business and, and personal. And she, she did it as she could but she made herself get up and do it. And I've known an awful lot of other people. And so that's one of the commitments I've made to be consistent is, um, as some of you know, I've had some health issues over the last year and a half and it, it, yeah, they've come wham, 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 one at a time, just about the time I think I'm getting okay, then wham, something else, but it's not all that, not compared to that, not compared to what other people go through. So I've pledged myself to be more consistent about stop whining get, put on my big girl panties, get up and do my thing. Okay. So there you have it. And if yours is where you're at psychologically, mentally, emotionally, I, I am sending you the biggest mama bear hugs. I truly am. I'm not joking about that, but as I hug you, I'm going to help lift you up. I'm going to dust you off and then I'm going to shove you out the door. Okay. So again, this spread, um, or these, these cards and the questions that they ask are from parade.com. The link is in the section down below. And it's also, um, it's also right up here. And so the first one is the sun, which of course is the physical world. So what, what's your current situation, right? Um, what are you holding on to that only serves your ego? And sometimes people feel like, well, ego just means, you know, I think I'm all that that's, that's not true. Ego can be where you just don't think you're anything or capable of anything. That's don't, please don't, please don't, please. You, everybody is worth so much, even just to have had the willpower, the strength, the imagination, the anything to incarnate in this physical world. I don't care what you've achieved or not achieved in life. I have a lot of friends that are some people would call them junkies. Some people would call them tweakers. Some people would call them losers. They'll only do that once around me. Um, so please don't call those people losers because at their core, their soul is perfect and precious. What they're showing in this world is uh, that's, a, you know what, let me shut up. That's a video for another time. But um, then you've got the moon, right? Which is the spiritual realm. You get the moon card. What story are you telling yourself? Ask yourself, you know, th these are self-reflective questions. What stories have you been telling yourself and where can you go to get more in touch with your emotional side? And when you do, how can you transform that to be the emotions that you want? Happiness can have to be a choice sometimes in our life. Sometimes things go sideways. They do. They go as the Brits, I, you know, never mind. Look up what the Brits say about that, because um, it's very funny. But I, but, but I'm, be, but I'm being professional today. So um, sometimes things do, and it, and it sucks. But you've got to make the choice to be happy every day. You do, and so there you have it. I love this one. What's out of balance, right? So what's causing tension in your life? Where is your life feeling misaligned with your destiny? How come you're not moving towards your sacred purpose? And one of the cards I love for achieving balance is, um, uh, of course, there's the six of pentacles. And then there is the world card. Oh, I love the, um, 
uh, the lady dancing in the middle of, um, have I lost my mind? Is that the world card? Do I have to be embarrassed that I don't remember it? No, it's the world card. I'm pretty sure if it's not write me back, but it's the, it's the winner's wreath. It's the winner's circle. And that beautiful lady is dancing in the middle of it. She's dancing on one foot. Pretty sure that's the world. I'll look it up later, but um, ask yourself that. And then ask yourself in a tarot spread, what, what will be left behind? What is the universe asking you to release and move forward? And how can you honor this chapter in your life? Oh my God. I had a lady one time say to me, hold on, I can take another step. She owned a spiritual center here in town. She was the director of a spiritual center. And we. she wrote me and wanted to meet. And she wanted me to come do readings out of their facility and that kind of thing. Um, and the first thing she said to me is, it's such an honor to meet you. I just want you to know up front, I have messed up my life so badly. And all I could do was look at her. And I said, um, well, I, I've never met anybody in the metaphysical world that follows metaphysical practices that hasn't been through a really serious trauma. We're all Chiron. We're, we're all the wounded healer. That's my opinion anyway. And I said, so I'm just unsure why you, the guiding light for people that come to you wanting you to help them, to help them heal, to help them learn, to help them grow. Why is the first thing out of your mouth? I have messed up my life so badly. Okay. Are you back on track? Have you forgiven yourself? I mean, listen, you can hypona po 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 po, you know, be the po po of your own life and come arrest yourself when you have seriously criminal thoughts like that. Come on now. And she just looked at me. She said, I have no idea why I said that to you. And I said, well, I mean, if there's some thing I can help you with, I'm so happy to help you. But I, you know, one business owner to another, I don't recommend you meeting people with, <laughs> with that. But that, that was the theory that she operated at. Everything that she saw, everything that she said was seen and spoken through the filter of, I am not worthy. And it showed in her business, in herself, in her, uh, uh, in her partner choices, in lots and lots and lots of things. And that is not being judgmental. That is being uh, you know, when it all goes sideways again and again and again and again, those are choices. So all of that being said, don't do that to yourself. Don't derail yourself. I'm getting off my soapbox now. Okay. So, um, the other thing that I love in this tarot, uh, new moon and eclipse tarot kind of guide that parade.com put out was they wrote, um, the path forward, ask yourself, show to have the tarot show you what your path forward will be what lessons can you learn during this eclipse season um what steps can you take for can you take forward and again i'm going to go back to honor where that whole diatribe about what that person said was how do you honor a chapter in your life okay maybe maybe you chose the very wrongest partner that you could have but did you did you choose the wrong partner? Maybe you made a choice to buy $50 worth of hair and makeup stuff instead of paying your electric bill. Now your lights are off. Okay. That maybe wasn't the smartest choice. Might not have been the best choice, but was it or wasn't it? And how do you honor that? I, that's a whole nother video and it will all boil down to forgiveness and at what point do we decide whether we're just using that as an excuse, right? My, like when people, spiritual people say, I say this in love, and then they fillet you with the sweetest smile and the prettiest jargon, and you just want to pop them in the face because you're not dumb and you know what they're doing. And it's so Southern. We do that. Well, bless his pee-picking heart. 
we, we do, that's all we can hear. That's all Southerners can hear when people say, I say this in love. So please don't ever say that to me. Um, cause I'll say, bam, no, that's, that's not true. Okay. So let's, let's get down to last but not least the new moon spirit animal, your April 8th eclipse spirit animal is drum roll, please Aries, because it's, the new moon is in Aries and Aries, as we determined way earlier in this never ending video is all about the goat, <laughs> you know, the Ram. I love this spirit animal. And if you are an Aries, I, I love you. There are two Aries in my most immediate family and they are like, rum, 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 rum. And <laughs> It's just fantastic to see them go because they are, they are, um, what, what, <laughs> what is it Scotty used to say? Um, something like, um, yeah, I got her, I, but I don't think she'll hold together. Oh, I've given her all she can take captain, but I don't think she'll hold together. God, that was the worst Scotty impression ever, but you get it. Okay. So when you are in, in speaking of confidence, when you are looking for the confidence to do something new, to branch out on a new path, man, Aries energy is what you want. Now, here's why I say that. And honestly, we can be done with this never ending video. People always say something, something, whatever, move mountains. This person moved a mountain to do this. This person moved a mountain to do that. And that is true. People can move mountains, theoretically. But in, I guess it depends on, you know, how big you think a mountain should be or how big you think a mountain is. Okay. But where I'm really going with this is when you watch rams, goats, that kind of thing, mountain goats, for instance, they only need a two inch by two inch space put their little hooves up there and climb one little step at a time up that mountain. But if you've ever watched video of them, they shove a shoulder up against that mountain and they keep that shoulder up against that mountain while they go bink, 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 and they get up that mountain. So I was watching that one day and I thought, you know what? We may not be able to move mountains, but we certainly can work with mountains to move us. And I, I can't tell you how many clients I've said that to over the years and I watch their eyes go doing, 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 because that seems more doable and they get it more easily than somebody saying you can move mountains. You can, depending on how big a mountain is, right? Um but something more doable is for you to work with the mountain to move you. And that's all you want to do is move you. What are you not moving towards that you want to be move, moving towards? What, where are you feeling stuck? You know, stuck in the middle with you. Where where can you, you you're just like, oh, oh I'm in quicksand. Oh, oh I'm, you know, it, <laughs> one of those videos that I watch until way too late uh, at night, you know, the people that are like the, the most unlucky people in the world or the luckiest people in the world and they get stuck in glue or they get stuck in something like that. And the next thing you know, they can't move. You know what I'm talking about? Cause I know you watch them too. Uh, you're part of those 2 million views. Believe me. I know I can see you, but you know, the Aries Zodiac symbol just represents tenacity and intelligence. And it also represents courage. Now to a mountain goat, I mean, they grew up in the mountains. I, I don't imagine climbing a mountain scares them too much. That's what they grew up doing. That's what they grew up being taught. But if that's not what you grew up doing and it's not what you grew up being taught, um, I, I am sad to say, and I mean it, I am sad to say a good portion of my reading business are people that just don't have the courage to listen to their own intuition if I had a nickel for every time somebody says, well, you just confirmed so-and-so and such-and-such. And such. Okay. I need that sometimes. I have a person I call and I'm like, hey, you got a minute to flip cards? And she's always like, yes, she's 
one of my, she's my soul sister. She's my, you know, I got, well, actually I got two of them that, um, and they're always there and they're very different people and they give me very different perspectives. And I need that too sometimes, but at the end of the day, I will always go with my own gut, right or wrong. I will always do it because then I train myself. Here's a mama bear moment. I train myself to listen better the next time. If I listened incorrectly this time, I will know better what it feels like next time. If I have that same kind of ooh or that thing in the pit of my stomach and I just, I, I go with it despite that, ugh, that's on me. That's not on anybody else. Or I have that, yeah, baby. And I'm like, I don't know. That seems a little far-fetched. I did it at the end of last year. I was talking to a friend of mine about this the other day. I was in a place with uh, an investment that I just didn't know what to do. And so I pulled the tower card. I was like, okay. And the voice in my head, I have them. That's, that's why I do readings. The voice in my head said, sell it all. Every smack bit of it, you'll have the opportunity to buy at 95% off what you paid for it this time. Okay. If it sounds too good to be real, it probably is, is what I told myself. I didn't do what, what happened, what, what I was told and gosh, darn it. <laughs> I lost money. Oh yes, I did. And it taught me that, uh, yeah, that to listen to myself next time, because the tower card taught me that, yeah, I, I lost some bucks that sucked, but I learned a great spiritual lesson from it. And guess what? I would have been able to rebuy what I owned at 95% off. Yes. I'm talking about cryptocurrency. So ask who you want to get a reading from who you want to, but trust yourself enough that if you're going to read for yourself, don't, don't do what people do and pull the cards 95 times, hoping you're going to get a different answer. Go with what your gut is telling you. Listen to the universe. Listen to your spirit animals. Listen to your spirit guides. Li I don't know who you listen to. I don't know who you think you listen to, who you believe you listen to. I don't know all of that. And I don't want a manifesto about it either. <laughs> but I do know that you listen to someone and someone speaks to you and it is you. So that's about all I got to say about that. So here we go, wild ones. You are going to put one shoulder against that rock. You only need two little square inches to put your little hoof up there and move up, move up, move up, move up, nibble a little grass, drink a little water that's cascading it down the, you know, down the mountain and get to where it is that you want to go. It is really just that simple. And again, pick your hard, which hard are you going to pick? So I, I know that this was the longest ever video about anything ever. I truly do. Yes, I do. But there is so much important, again, so much important about this April 8th eclipse, about this particular Aries new moon. Um, and then there's really even no reason to talk about Mercury retrograde. Yeah, it might be lurking around back here, but you can give it the old one-two punch with the solar eclipse and the new moon, right? Mercury retrograde comes up and you say, bam, bam. And that's it. Mercury retrograde does this and is never seen or heard from again. Well, this time. So I love you very much. I thank you for listening. If you would consider subscribing to my channel, that would be fabulous. I've got 60,000 links down there. So you can um, read the articles on my site. They're free. You can read more about uh, goat and ram symbolism. You can, you can read about a whole bunch of stuff. You read about chakras, you can read about a whole bunch of stuff. And so read about a whole bunch of stuff. But again, consider subscribing to my channel. I really hope this was helpful to you. I thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you feel so compelled, hit that like button. It is very helpful to me. And remember, consistency this year is key. And what do I end all of my videos with? Do good for animals, including yourself, and stay wild.